What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is an unboxing and review of the Nerf Ultra 2. All right, you guys, so I'll have to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of this line when it first came out. I'm not sure I'm still a fan of the line. I probably am not, but I have not used one of these blasters yet. I have not held one of these blasters yet. So I'm gonna remain unbiased until we test this blaster out. And then I'll give you all my feelings and thoughts on this line and the blaster obviously too at the end of the video. But let's check out this blaster. This is definitely an interesting design. I thought it looked really awesome when it first came out, the pictures did. And we have not really seen a revolver like this from Nerf, and I think that's awesome uh, that they're doing something different. This is the Nerf Ultra line, so this is a new ammo type. The only blaster that's out before this was the Nerf Ultra 1, of course. I guess we're just going to keep numbering them. I think that's a little silly to just have numbers instead of names, but you do you, Hasbro. This blaster is definitely a lot more interesting to me than the first release. So I picked this one up and it was half the price. So that helps too, to kind of get a feel for the line. We will definitely check this thing out in a second, but we do need to go over the box real quick because it says some very important and interesting things. First off, 120 foot ranges. That is some crazy range claims from this new ammo type. We will put that to the test. Number two is this revolver actually is flywheel powered and takes six AA batteries. So that's a few more AA batteries than we usually get in a flywheel blaster. So that's interesting that they've upped the voltage a little bit. So that's something to note. Just make sure you buy six AA batteries if you purchase this because you'll need them to be able to use this blaster. And by the way, very nice packaging from Hasbro. They are putting the marketing, you know, to 1000 on this line. Like it's crazy, but I do really like the cardboard box and the, the shape of it. And I think it's really nice presentation. Uh, that's really cool. But on the top here, it says the furthest flying Nerf dart ever. So I'm assuming they mean Nerf as the brand, not Nerf as the hobby. And I don't know if that's saying so much because there's only a few darts. The elite darts aren't great by any stretch of the imagination. They do fly pretty far, but you know, I don't know if they're comparing that to the equal power behind it. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical if it's the furthest flying, but if it is, I'm sure it's not by a lot. Nevertheless, something to take note of. Check out the back of the box here. So there's a few things here I wanna take a look at real quick and then we'll get this thing open. It says powerful speed, so I'm assuming that means high FPS numbers. It doesn't really give a FPS number like it does in the rival line, but assuming it'll get high FPS. Extreme distance, so those range claims, obviously, that's kind of what it's saying. It's gonna get shoot really far. We are definitely putting this thing over the chronograph and on the range as usual, so don't worry about that. Pinpoint accuracy. Pinpoint accuracy meaning these darts are supposed to be more accurate than other Nerf darts. We'll definitely put that to the test. Innovative flight tip. Um, so I'm assuming the tip of this is supposed to be different somehow, but it looks exactly like a you know mega dart tip or you know elite dart tip, just different size to fit this foam. And then the foam, lightweight foam. So the foam is definitely very different of this dart. I'm sure most of you guys already are familiar with these darts, but it's like a styrofoam material. And it has also a aerofin technology, which is the back part and also makes this supposedly hard to replicate. So it's supposed to keep other companies from knocking off this dart and then you being able to use them in this blaster because there is a uh, DRM dart detector in there to, to know that it's the right type of dart before it fires it. So not a huge fan of that at all. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Just make good quality darts for an affordable price and you will sell your darts, Hasbro. Well, I don't know why that's a problem. Nevertheless, let's crack this thing open. Okay, so this blaster is pretty large and the grip is unbelievably uncomfortable. I think it looks awesome. It has a nice look, but it is just way too small. And for as big as this blaster is, I don't know why you have to make a grip that is miniaturized. And it's just really cramped in this region to be specific. 
I think the back part isn't too bad, but the space between your finger guard here and the bottom of the grip is just really, really small. And the rev trigger is way up in there, so it's hard to get this on this finger and uh, the other two just barely fit on. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit of, of a poor design and I could tell that immediately. So that's disappointing. So I'm, I was kind of hopeful for this grip at least because it looks really cool, but yeah, it just needs to be about 20% bigger and it'd probably be not too bad. Nevertheless, the Gold Ultra in person is even worse than I thought it would be. It is so gaudy and just so massive. I don't care for that at all. I think it looks ridiculous. Nevertheless, they decided to not even do it on this side. This is completely orange and nothing going on here. And they definitely are advertising this as a premium product. So that is very interesting that uh, they don't want to paint this side of the blaster, even on their top of the line items uh, that they spend all that marketing money on. So interesting. Let's spend money on marketing, not on actually designing good products. I don't know. Uh, that's just my opinion. Nevertheless, let's go over the features of the blaster. Obviously you have a Nerf tactical rail on top and on bottom, along with a pair of iron sights on top here. This front one is pretty cool looking, pretty aggressive there, if you can see that. Uh, that's very interesting, but this one back here is very minimal. So kind of interesting contrast there. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but uh, you know, it works, I guess. Very interesting design on the plastic here. Uh, that's kind of like a triangles, like zigzag pattern, kind of futuristic. I think that's pretty darn cool. We do have a sling point behind here and on the grip. So two sling points, so you could sling this guy if you so choose. Turn her around. We have a jam door right here that you can lift up. That's a little bit difficult. And this plastic is a little bit cheaper than your other plastic, but you know, it's okay, I guess but that's a little plain and there's actually some scratches on mine, which is interesting. So I could see that breaking off because it's kind of hard to pull up. I could see a kid having trouble with that. And let's go ahead and take a look at the flywheels actually. They are much larger than your normal Nerf flywheels, kind of um, probably a little bit smaller than a Mega Dart flywheeler like on the Mastodon, uh, but obviously they're gonna be bigger because they have to push a bigger dart through there. So that makes sense. The battery door will be located right here. So we'll have to undo this screw and then we'll insert six AA batteries. So let's go ahead and do that. So I don't talk about loading batteries too often on my reviews, but this one's a little bit different. There is actually a second row behind the top row on this one here. So we have to throw that in there and then throw this guy back in there. And then we can put the top row in and then the bottom. There we go, throw on the cover and we should be set. So if you're curious, here's a size comparison of the three different types of darts. The Ultra Dart here in the middle is a tad bit shorter than the Elite Dart and obviously shorter than the Mega Dart, but it is bigger around than the Elite Dart. So that is uh, interesting there. The Mega Dart though is obviously much longer and wider than the Ultra Dart. So. That's one of the big differences. It's just kind of a between size of these two in thickness, uh, but definitely shorter in length. So maybe that gives it a little more accuracy. I don't know. But the tip design seems just like a normal dart, which is interesting. I don't know why they didn't go with more of an AccuStrike kind of tip, because we know those to be a lot more accurate than uh, your normal Nerf tip. But uh, yeah, they just went with a normal Nerf tip on these. So not sure about that. But uh, nevertheless, we'll go ahead and load these guys up into the blaster. So these rear load right here, so you can just load it right in there. That actually loads in pretty easily. It's pretty awesome. And then I don't know if we can rotate it around without firing it. Yep. So there we go. There's a dart though that's already pushed further down here. So I don't know if that's supposed to be that way, but you know what, let's go ahead and fire this thing off a few times. All right, here we go. So it already won't fire because it can't feel that dart because for whatever reason it got pushed too far through. I guess I have to undo this jam here and push it back. There we go. All right, now maybe it can feel the dart. I don't know why it got pushed further forward, probably when I rotated the barrel around somehow. I'm not real sure, but nevertheless, I think that fixed the problem. So now we will try it, see if it works this time. 
All right, fired. Well, I was giving it a little bit of a funny look because the darts were clearly not coming out straight. Like it was that obvious from here to the door, which is like 10 feet away. So that's a little disappointing, but uh, let's go ahead and take this thing outside, put it over the chronograph in the range and see what it's all about. All right, you guys. So before we get started here, I just want to say thank you so much for getting me to 20K subs. I just think that's awesome. I really cannot believe it, to be honest. Uh, so thank you guys who are subscribed to help make that possible. And if you're not subscribed, think about doing so. Join the team, and I think you'll be very happy that you did so. So let's go ahead and put some shots over the chronograph with the Ultra 2. But first, I want to show you one thing that I didn't realize right off the bat, and this rotates freely. So I'm not sure why I didn't even think it would do that, but uh, you know, Nerf likes to not let things do that sometimes. But it does rotate, so that's nice, so you don't have to you know, pull the trigger to rotate it around, which is important because if you do that, it will push the dart in and then won't be able to fire. So don't do it that way. Definitely use your finger to rotate it around so you can load up your, your cylinder there. So let's go ahead and fire this thing off, see what kind of performance it's getting. 76. 95. 76. 88, 80, error, and that's it. And I don't know if you guys could tell that, but those darts flew terribly, terribly. Like worse than elite darts, they were all over the place. Like they were the worst flying darts I think I've ever seen. We're gonna pick these up after I look at the ranges and do it one more time, but yeah. Range is not so good. 36, 37 feet. 45 feet. 54 feet. Just past 54 feet. And black is tough to see. Oh, we missed one back here. Just past 42 feet. And the furthest one. just short of 60 feet, about 60 feet. We'll give it 60. So 60 foot was the longest one, and man, that was uh, pretty uh, disappointing, to be honest. So we'll try it one more time to give it a fair shake. Did you see that? It just went right into the house, 70. It's probably pretty hard to get good uh, chronograph readings because they aren't even flying out of the barrel straight or out of the blaster. There isn't really a barrel. It's just empty space in there if you can see that I don't know but yeah uh, wow these are even worse than I thought they'd be well, that one flew fairly straight and we got 124 which I don't know if I believe <laughs> uh, now it's telling me my battery is low great all right, had to buy a new nine volt battery for the chronograph because the battery died, but we will continue to get a few more shots here with the Nerf Ultra 2, and hopefully we can get some decent FPS numbers, although it's hard to get the darts to go over the sensors because they are so inaccurate, but we will try. Here we go. That one went pretty straight, 96. 97. 94. 97, 98, 96. All right, actually that was not too terrible in terms of clustering and the darts didn't fly super inaccurate, uh, but they have been pretty wavy through the air. If you can't tell that, it is not an accurate dart at all. And I'm not even gonna test accuracy with any sort of thing because I can just tell right off the bat that they are probably the most inaccurate Nerf dart ever. But Let's see what the ranges are here. Uh, just short of 47. This one's uh, just short of 48. These two are right around 50. We have one up here at just past 59 feet. Is that all of them? I think we're missing, no, yep, that's it. So, um, you know, ranges are about the same as elite darts. 
accuracy is worse than Elite Darts. So all those things they said on the box are pretty much not true. We will test a couple angle shots here though, just to see if we can get anywhere close to that 120 feet. This is not a practical application of shooting this blaster because I don't know who would shoot this thing angled like this, a pistol angled, that doesn't really make sense. But to try to get the 120 feet they advertise, we will give it a couple tests here. That's probably more like 100 feet, maybe. But as you can see, they really catch the wind this way. They really catch the wind no matter what, actually, but they definitely catch the wind when you're shooting at this angle. We'll try one more. Gosh, they are so inaccurate. They just fly all over the place. All right, we'll check out those ranges. So we actually have gone downhill a little bit here, which should help the ranges, but that one's about 93, about 92, 93 feet. The black foam is in very, very difficult to see. It's almost impossible to see in certain lighting. So that was a poor mistake, in my opinion, on their part. That was 95, or maybe a good mistake, so you can buy more 50 cent darts. And we have one more, and like I said, very difficult to see. Hopefully I can find it. Well, I passed it up. It's back here, not even that far. Uh, 83 feet, so 120 feet? Yeah, I don't think so. We'll go back inside and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna review the blaster as is first, and then we will go on into the line and darts and all that, which could get a little ranty, I have a feeling. But nevertheless, as a whole, I think this blaster is cool in terms of its design. It's something different that Nerf has given us, which is awesome. Although they didn't do great with the <laughs> execution, in my opinion, of the blaster, uh, the grip is very uncomfortable because of the way the rev trigger is up in there and then there's just not enough room for the rest of your fingers. So it's very hard to rev the blaster in a way. And a lot of the weight of the blaster, because it's so large and there's batteries up here, is held by that finger that revs. And so that just makes it a little awkward and a little bit uncomfortable to hold and wield, in my opinion. You almost have to hold it with two hands to make it somewhat comfortable just because it just puts a lot of pressure on that finger. The trigger pull isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but that dart sensor in there to make it so you can only use these types of darts, Nerf Ultra darts that are made by Nerf in this blaster, definitely kind of gunks up the works a little bit, but I understand why they're doing this from a marketing perspective. I know that they don't want you to be able to buy other types of darts to use in their blasters, but I think they're going about it the wrong way, personally. And I'll get into more of that later, but I am pretty disappointed that for a premium product that they spent all this time marketing, that they couldn't execute the blaster a little bit better. The Ultra is really gaudy, but they've, I mean, maybe some people like that gold ultra. You'd think they would do it on both sides, but they don't. I think the blaster is cool. The performance was pretty awful. And honestly, I blame that mostly on the darts. Uh, the flywheels are a little loud for me, but you know, they may be, they probably are pretty unbalanced. So that could have something to do with it. But the darts are just horrendous. They are horrendous. They are not they're probably the worst Nerf dart ever, to be honest. They don't fly accurately at all. They come out of the barrel sideways. Like you can visibly see that when you're shooting the blaster. They do not fly straight at any point. And that's why the chronograph readings were pretty all over the place because it needs to fly over the chronograph straight. And if it's not doing that, the numbers aren't gonna be very accurate. So, and that's why we got even some errors because it literally could not fire straight over the sensors. So it, it is a little weird that they spent all this money on the dart, trying to make this amazing dart, which the only thing they did was make it so in theory, people cannot copy this dart, which I have a hard time believing that people couldn't copy this dart. I think anything's possible, but I don't think anybody's gonna wanna copy this dart because I'm not sure this line is going to last. So let's, uh, 
move forward into the conversation here and talk about the Ultra line. Obviously, it's a based around these darts, these foam darts that I don't really understand the reason why they went with this styrofoamy dart. And then they kept their old type of dart tip, even though they said it's a new type of tip, but it's not. It's the same sort of design we've always had, just a little different size. I mean, there's nothing good about this. I, I'm really curious how much money they invested into designing this dart because I think they designed it more so based off of making it so they thought people wouldn't be able to copy the dart as opposed to making actually a good solid dart that, you know, is going to work well. The people in the Nerf hobby have realized for years that half link 50 cal darts are very, very good and those are very easy to make. And all Nerf has to do to be able to sell their product is actually make quality darts for affordable prices. Look at Adventure Force darts. Those waffle darts have sold really well. I buy them now. I don't buy from, from China. I don't buy knockoff darts. I buy those because they are the best for the price, bar none. Like they are the best uh, for flywheelers. Now, out of like a sealed breach, it's a little different story. And I think Dart Zone did a really good job with their bamboo darts. And those are still pretty affordable. And it would be nice to see those more available, but I understand why maybe not putting half links out for sale at Walmart would make sense because no blasters can shoot those, you know, for the most part in stock form. But we would love to see that happen in the future. I think that's something that would be awesome. And I don't know why Nerf hasn't adopted that and said they go with a bigger dart that is not accurate at all guys not accurate at all it can fly far maybe uh, 120 feet i think is a little obscene especially level is not going to get that uh, but on, it honestly doesn't fly any further than elite darts in my opinion like with elite darts you can get some that fly really far and some that don't because they're they are light, they catch the wind in a certain way, and sometimes they go straight into the ground, sometimes they go far to the right, sometimes to the left, sometimes up, and if they go up and somewhat straight, they might fly far. <laughs> so how far a dart flies is very irrelevant if it isn't accurate, and this is not accurate. This is junk, do not buy these, they're 50 cents a piece. I think that's absolutely ludicrous. I mean, the most you should be spending on a dart, in my opinion, is like 10 maybe 15 cents probably more 10 cents or less five cents is what i like to spend on darts but you know 10 cents i think would be reasonable if nerf, nerf made a quality dart and sold them for 10 cents a piece in bulk people would buy them you know I, people are buying them now because they don't know any better but us in the hobby know better so that's why i'm making these videos so people that are less familiar with our hobby and aren't as into Nerf as I'm sure most of my subscribers are, can learn this information and hopefully get more informed. So it's up to you whether you wanna purchase this. I think it may be okay if we can modify the flywheels and the obviously cylinder a bit so they can fit and shoot elite style darts like those Adventure Force waffles. I think, I know my friend Rad Blasters has already created something to do that. Um, which is really cool and I'm sure other people will be doing the same thing. So that's awesome. I can't wait to see that and I plan on modding mine to be like that. That is really the only reason why I bought this is because I knew that it could possibly be modified to shoot elite darts or elite style darts. Don't use elite darts either. Uh, and the flywheels can be modified and then we could obviously rewire it for a lipo and make this thing pretty darn sweet. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review slash, you know, my opinions on the Ultra line. I don't really plan on buying too many of these blasters unless there's just a real good reason to purchase one. Uh, if there's like a new design similar to this, I may buy it, but the darts are just so terrible that I can't really recommend purchasing any Ultra Blaster. And since there's no other type of dart that we can really use in this blaster in stock form that would be better you know that doesn't really help it out much hopefully you guys enjoyed this don't forget to smash that like button subscribe if you're not subscribed ring the bell for notifications and as always guys peace out